Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy and I own the Water East Store and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about the planning process for installation of a Vectamax or any um, whole house or commercial reverse osmosis system just like this one here. So you've already gone through the process uh, because you've got high mineral content in your water or because you need super pure water for a commercial or farming type application you've decided that you need one of these systems. Now if you don't know how these systems work I definitely su suggest you uh, click on the link up here that'll take you to a video that explains exactly how they work. So this is the pretreatment summary chart for the reverse osmosis system. So to get best performance out of it, we have to make sure that we stay within the recommended feed water range, as you see on the left-hand column. So the first thing we have to make sure is that we're uh, treating water that's less than 2,000 parts per million TDS, or total dissolved solids. And then we go down to hardness, six grains per gallon. So if your water is harder than that, you're going to need a water softener to pretreat it. Uh, total iron, 0 0.05 parts per million. Tannins, 0.5 parts per million. Chlorine, 0.1 parts per million. So if your water source is a municipal water source where they treat it with chlorine, and pretty much all of them do, we're going to have to make sure we get that chlorine content down by using a carbon filter, um, etc. And you can see that uh, that's shown here where it talks about what you're going to need to, to get there. All these items we can help you with. Uh, pH, 5.5 to 9.5 um, is what we're going to be looking for. Um, organics. So we're going to need to make sure that the, the water going into here doesn't have any bacteria in it. So if it does, we'll have to pretreat that with an ultraviolet system. Manganese, 0 0.05 parts per million. And you can follow down the chart. Hydrogen sulfide, that rotten egg smell from the water, you need to make sure that there's none of that there. And obviously turbidity, because turbidity would clog the filters and it would clog the whole system. So that's something we have to be aware of. And this is what you need to address as part of the reverse osmosis uh, whole home commercial system. So with this pretreatment, obviously you're going to have to plan the space for that. So if you have a pretreatment like a water softener or something like that, you have to allocate that space, but also the storage tanks for the water. If you're going to an atmospheric uh, storage tank and then uh, repressurizing the system, you have to plan for that space. Also, there's some post-treatment. And again, if you're going to use this for uh, drinking water or household water, you're going to need to uh, install an ultraviolet disinfection system after the um, the water has been uh, repressurized to service the house because whenever you store water in a tank there's always a risk of uh, introducing bacteria to it and that's why you need ultraviolet after this system another requirement is feed water flow requirements so again if we're using this example of this rsl 4800 you're going to need eight u.s gallons per minimum uh, minimum uh, water flow to be able to uh, feed this reverse osmosis system Thinking about wastewater, so again with this RSL 4800, um, the wastewater waste production rate, if your feed water is less than a thousand uh, TDS, then it's going to be about two gallons per minute. However, if it's above a thousand TDS, obviously below two thousand TDS, then you're looking at higher wastewater of five US gallons per minute. Again, going back to the manual, if you look at the power requirements, again using the RSL 4800 as an example. Um, 8.7 to 9.4 amps, uh, 230 volt, 208 volts, um, single phase. But again, if you're going with the, um, the high pressure system, then the power requirements are a lot higher than that. And then thinking about maintenance, you're also going to have to leave some space around the equipment. Um, if you have a water softener, you can leave, have to leave space to add salt to the water softener, uh, ultraviolet system to uh, do maintenance on that, change the UV lamp, etc. But for this uh, part of it itself, you're going to have to leave space to get to this filter housing so you can change the filter because it's going to have to be changed uh, relatively often. But the membranes also are going to have to be changed and they come straight out through the top. So you need to leave at least this much space above the unit to allow for those uh, membrane changes in the future. We offer free shipping and discount pricing on the full line of Vectamax whole home and commercial reverse osmosis systems. Just click the link up here. We also have a lot of information about this. If you click um, the link again up here to our video playlist that will show you all the videos about commercial and reverse osmosis systems. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of all the new videos they become available on this channel. I'd also really appreciate if you could share this video with your Facebook friends. 
If you'd like some more information, you can go to our websites, either thewatereastore.com or thewaterstoremidland.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Waterstore Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.